So what I'm going to be talking about today is pH. What exactly is pH? pH is something that is very, very important in the natural hair community. What is pH? pH is the potential of hydrogen. It means the number of particles, basically ions, in a water-based solution. So just to put that in layman terms, pH is something that we can use to measure hair products and what it will do to our hair. And this is something that specifically can give us an idea of how that particular product will affect our hair. So if you want to know how a, a shampoo, um, a conditioner, or a leave-in conditioner, or even the gels that you put in your hair, if you want to know how it's going to affect your hair before you even put it on your hair, the first thing and the best thing to do is measure the pH of that particular product. Now, be aware, you only can measure products that are water-based. You cannot measure oil. Oil, does like coconut oil, olive vera oil, any type of oil, you cannot measure the pH of that because basically it does not have water. Water does not mix with oil. So the only things you can measure a pH of is your water-based products. And all these products that I have here, specifically being my shampoo, my rinse out conditioner, a leave-in conditioner, and the gel that I use to twist my hair, you can measure the pH of these and you can measure them and then have an idea of how that particular product is going to affect your hair. So this is very important and I don't see that a lot of natural hair vloggers put a lot of attention into this particular subject. So now that we got that covered, when it comes to our hair we have a healthy pH range and that pH range is 4.5 to 5.5 and what that is is something that we need to have hair products in that range or no higher than a 7 in order to know that is something that will not damage our hair. So when it comes to pH there is a particular range and the range is 0 to 14. On the 0 side it's defined as acidic and on the 14 side that's considered alkaline. Now when it comes to our hair, our hair has a pH and that pH range which is considered a healthy range is 4.5 to 5.5. So our hair is definitely on the acidic side and any products that we like to use in order to maintain healthy hair should be in the range of 4.5 to 5.5. So that is something that I feel like needs to be emphasized and is not emphasized enough is that when you are looking to grow healthy natural hair, you need to be aware of the pH of your products. And with your products, you can measure the pH of your hair products. Now the products have to be water-based. So what I have here today is my shampoo, my rinse out conditioner, my leave-in conditioner, and my gel I use to twist my hair. So why do we want to know the pH of a product? Well, depending on the pH level of that particular product, it will affect your hair a certain way. So even before you put a product on your hair, you can measure that pH level of that particular product and know exactly how it's going to affect your hair. Because what we want to do is we want to put products on our hair that are healthy for our hair and want to be able to know how we are manipulating our hair. Uh, but first, let me explain about the hair itself. So each hair strand has a cuticle layer and the cuticle layer is the outside layer of our hair. And the pH of a hair product will affect that cuticle layer. So that based on the number of that hair product, it will either make your cuticle layer of your hair strand either come up 
or flatten. And what we are looking to do with our hair product is that we want to maybe temporarily lift a cuticle layer so that products can have access to the middle layer of our hair, which is the cortex, but then we want to close that layer back down and so we can lock in the moisture when it comes to uh, moistures that we put on to our hair strands. So products basically affect the cuticle layer of your hair and allowing it to open up the cuticle layer or flatten it. Now when you have kinky hair or 4C hair, our hair is so curly, the natural oil, the sebum, and will not slide down to the ends of our hair and that's why we have dry hair. So as a result, we have to moisturize our hair with outside products and the way to do that is that you use these water-based products that we have here and you have to know the pH level in order to know exactly how it's going to affect your cuticle layer. And what I'm going to be bringing to you today is measure each hair product and what it will do to your hair. So what I'm going to be measuring today are my shampoo, my conditioner, my leave-in conditioner, and my gel that I use to twist my hair. Now, what I have for you today is actually a set. I have an actual set from Shea Moisture, and it is the Jamaican Black Castor Oil Strengthen and Restore um, set. So I have the shampoo, I have its rinse out conditioner, and I actually have its leave-in conditioner. And I notice a lot of vloggers don't use the set very often, and I was wondering why, and any of these channels that you see, and they do a video on, I use this particular shampoo from this brand, and I use this particular rinse out conditioner from this brand, and I use this leave-in conditioner, and they're not all within the same set. Well, they never explain to you or tell you that the pH is still very important when it comes to using different brands and using them together. And the reason being is that because you want to know how it's going to affect your cuticle layer. So when it comes to a set, one of the nice things of using the whole set from the shampoo to the leave-in conditioner, you can be guaranteed when you use a whole set from one particular brand, like in this case the Jamaican black castor oil, that the pH order is definitely set and it's balanced and it's meant to do your hair accordingly as it is. So for I give you an example, the shampoo that you put on your hair should have the highest pH level. You're using shampoo to wash your hair. And so what it's doing is lifting the cuticle layer and actually you're using it to wash your hair and wash your scalp. So that should have the highest pH level. And then from there, your pH level should go in descending order. So this can be a five or a six. And then from there, you should not put the next product you put on your hair, which usually what it is, is our rinse out conditioner, is should be a lower pH because at that point you want to go down in the scale in, of your pH because you want the cuticle layer to lay flat. When you have a cuticle layer that lays flat, it allows you to prevent tangling, it allows you to lock in moisture. So your shampoo is your highest pH. The next one down, your rinse out conditioner is your, should be lower pH than your shampoo because you're looking to lower your cuticle layer. And then your leave-in conditioner should be even lower than your rinse out conditioner because you don't want to raise your cuticle layer back up and have moisture seep out of your hair strand. So that is where the measuring of your hair product should come into play so that you know exactly that you are using your uh, products in the right order and and the way to do that is with pH strips these right here these are what you use to measure your hair products and I got two of these two different types of pH they're pretty much the same but one just has a range of 4.5 to 9.0 and the other one has the full range from 0 
to 14 bees. So these are what you're going to be using to measure your pH of your water-based products. And once you know the pH of that particular product, you know how it's supposed to affect your hair. And you know if it's okay to use those products in the order that they are you are using those products because if this conditioner was a higher pH than my shampoo then I would not want to use this conditioner but that's the good thing about a set that's a good thing about using all the products in one set is that you know that the pH will be in descending order and you don't have to go the extra mile or step of measuring the pH to make sure it is in descending order. Product brands that put a set together, they are formulated to work together and their pH levels are compatible and the pH level is going in a downward direction. So if you are just starting out in the natural hair uh, journey or going with natural hair, please start with a set so that you know exactly what you're putting on your hair and it is the proper combination and it is definitely going in the downward direction. So if you use products from different uh, brands, make sure you know the pH of each one of those products so that you know you are using them in descending order. Lately, uh, the last two or three weeks, I've just been using all my products within one set. So I've been using the shampoo, the rinse out conditioner, as well as the leave-in conditioner. So I really don't need to measure the pH of these particular products because I know they are in the order that I uh, have to use them in order to lower my cuticle layer accordingly. But I wanted to measure my uh, gel because it is not part of this kind of nose because it is not part of this set. So I want to make sure that the pH of my gel, that which is the last product I put on my hair with my wash routine, is either equal to the pH level of my leave-in conditioner or is a lower pH. Now, if my gel turns out to be a higher pH than my leave-in conditioner, then I would not want to use um, that particular gel on my hair because all I'm going to be doing is lifting or raising my cuticle layer again. That's what I don't want to do. I don't want to raise my cuticle layer and have my moisture seep out or have tangles, possible tangling of my hair. So that is where, geez, very windy, isn't it? That is where your pH strips come into play to measure. So for you, I'm going to measure the pH of each one of these products and let you know what they are and prove to you that it is in descending order and also measure this and make sure this is lower or equal or lower than my leave-in conditioner. So that's what you're going to see next.